Hey everybody, it's Kirst, and today I'm here to bless you with what I think are the top 5 invocations for the brand new Rune Master class in Last Epoch 0.92. The patch came out yesterday, and oh my god, this class has some of the highest skill ceiling of any class in any ARPG I've seen. It's truly impressive what they've created here. Uh, I think they still have some work to do with balancing some of the skills. And if you look at the Runic Invocation skill tree, you'll notice that there aren't too many very high damage multipliers in it. There are a few here and there. But overall, you're going to have to rely on the inherent damage within each spell to get those deeps out. So that's why I'm going to highlight the five spells that have the most potential within the Runic Invocation. I don't have any build guides yet. I don't have anything of that sort. I'm just uh, highlighting based on my first impressions from, I don't know, six hours of studying this class since it came out yesterday to share with you which five spells I think have the most potential. Anyways, let's check them out. Irashemase! So here we are. The first spell I want to highlight is Fire, Lightning, Fire. And you can hover over down here to see what kind of spell that is. It is Plasma Orb, which creates a sphere that orbits you. Very similar to Static Orb, to be honest. It costs 57 mana. And the added spell damage is 200 effectiveness uh, to the orbs hits and 150 to the lightning hits. What makes it good is when you cast it, enemies can get hit multiple times with it. As you can notice, the second good thing about it is that it moves with you. And so it's really strong for those auto bomber builds. You just cast it once and you just start running through the monolith. So this is the kind of spell you might want to utilize for monolith farming. It probably isn't going to be as good for boss killing. But for mono farming, it should be pretty useful. Uh, the effective damage is decent, 150, and you get to multiply it by 3 or 4. Just because of the fact that the spell is going to hit enemies multiple times. So that's one spell... I'm looking forward to testing out. I think the damage percentages are not going to be as good as the Static Orb, unfortunately. But maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to try it out and see. The next one I want to highlight is Lightning, Fire, Fire. And that is Hydra Hedron, which, as you can see, adds spell damage is at 200% effectiveness. And it essentially is a turret that fires at nearby enemies. And so it's going to... In total, fire 10 or so shots, making it about 2,000% effectiveness against single target bosses, for example. And that's pretty good. Uh, the damage gets delivered a little bit slowly, as you can see here. Uh, but all in all, it's pretty decent. Uh, I think this is one of those skills that you can cast it, leave it on the ground, and run. Making monoliths efficient, similar to how auto bombers work. So anytime we can get efficiency like that, I value the skill higher than other skills, for example. There is also a unique that can upgrade the Hydrohedron. Uh, I haven't dropped it yet, so I don't know how useful it is. But this is definitely one skill to look into. The next one I want to highlight for you guys is Lightning, Lightning, Lightning. And this one releases a Lightning Orb, which then starts zapping everything around it in a radius. And each zap does 80% effectiveness. It casts it four times per second, so it's 320% effectiveness per second. And the good news here is that it actually counts as a hit. So crit chance and crit multiplier work on this thing. So 300% effectiveness per second, that's pretty solid. And the other reason I really like this one is because it's easy to execute. All you have to do is spam a single element, lightning, and then cast your runic invocation. So it's very easy to stack a bunch of them and get a lot of hits. And all of those hits should count for your ward generation in uh, Jagged Veil vale over here, ward generated on crit. So that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, the ease of execution of this one is what really pushes it up in utility for me. Uh, the damage should be decent, especially if you can spam a bunch of them in a row. And yeah, that's the third one I wanted to share. The fourth one that I have is a defensive skill. It's Cold, Fire, Cold, to cast it. And down here we can see that is the Frost Guard. It gives you a shield that grants 30% less damage taken. 
that is incredibly significant. It's even better than Lightning Ages, <laughs> which is one of the one of the better defensive skills that Mage has at their disposal. It gives you even some freeze rate multi. Uh, it also gives you stupid amounts of ward. Initial ward gained is 120 plus 6 per intelligence. And with this class, you're going to be stacking intelligence more likely than not, especially if you want to go crit. And so you can easily get 50 to 100 in. Let's say you have 100. That's 700 ward gained initially. Plus every 0.4 seconds, another 120 ward, which amounts to 300 ward per second. That's... That's so strong. This is one of the best defensive skills. It does some sort of explosion at the end, but we don't care about that. You would be using this one just for defensive purposes to keep your ward up, to keep your damage reduction up. And overall, I strongly recommend this skill. It also lasts 13 seconds, which is pretty decent. You would have to probably not go the cooldown route for runic invocation because it, otherwise you're just relying on it for utility frost guard purposes more often than not and so let's check it out real quick here it is we cast it and you can see my ward keeps going up it lasts for 13 seconds and it's just a very very solid skill overall and that's the explosion so that is the fourth skill and now for the fifth and final skill we have cold fire fire which gives us Igneous Rain, which is kind of like a better Meteor Shower than uh, the Meteor Shower that Sorcerer gets, unfortunately. It gives you 150% spell damage effectiveness, and it fires something like 10 or so Meteorites, each of them de dealing 150. And the important thing to note here is um, that one target can be hit by multiple Meteorites. So all 10 can hit the same boss, if the boss is large enough. And the, the other thing to note here is if you read at the very bottom, increased area for area skill modifiers increases the size of the meteorite's impact, but not the area in which they fall. And what that means is you really want to be stacking area with this one to ensure that every enemy within the uh, target area of the skill gets hit by as many meteorites as possible. So Glyph Carver's dominance is something that I would strongly recommend to Max if you wanted to utilize this spell. And uh, otherwise, yeah, let me show you how it works. You just right click. This is area is always going to be the same, but the explosion radius of the little meteorites varies. And so here it is on a single dummy. You can see it's getting hit by pretty much all of the meteorites. And that's really good. That's 1500, 10 times 150 weapon damage effectiveness especially if you invest in area a little bit more than i have right now so in terms of single cast spell dealing the most single target damage igneous rain together with the hydrohedron are probably the two highest single target damage spells uh, available to runic invocation so there you have it those are the five skills i wanted to share with you um obviously each one of those has different purposes. Some of them are going to be great in monoliths, like the ones that stay with you and deal damage over multiple screens, like the orbiting plasma ball. And some of them are going to be better against single target, like this meteorite shower. Uh, however, the meteorite shower is also pretty decent at AoE. So I've, I kind of like that spell. I'm going to have to test it out and see if I can make it work. And then there are some utility defensive skills like frost guard, some spammable skills like the lightning 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 invocation the, that is the orb that zaps everything underneath it but overall this class is too much fun you everybody i recommend you try it out see what you like and i'm going to be trying it out a bunch more myself until i get to land on a build and actually make a proper build guide we'll see it might take me a little bit of time though because i'm still only level 82 have some leveling to go have some um, monolith blessings to obtain until then, I hope you all have a good time and enjoyed the brand new patch. Take it easy, everybody. Kuchiso sama deshita.